and this uh, is planted in rows, actually in hills, and the whole field, as you can see, is cross-checked. A few minutes ago, we talked about uh, the way that the sorghum was planted. It was planted in rows uh, with one row in between for the horses to go through. Well, this is planted in hills about 36 to 40 inches apart, and that way the horses can go one way, and after they're finished cultivating it that way, then they can go diagonally across from where they were before. So, um, this is an open pollinated variety. Uh, the corn that I hold in my right hand is a dent variety, and it is called Hickory King. It's a white variety of corn. It would have been an all-purpose field corn for humans as well as animals. Very popular in the Tennessee Valley after the Civil War. Uh, but since this is the 1850 area, it's our fairly new area, uh, we decided that this particular variety, although a heritage or heirloom variety, was not authentic for this time period. So what we did, we, we did a lot of research last winter, and we came up with this particular variety. This is called gourd seed corn, and uh, this was probably the most common type corn grown in the Tennessee Valley before the Civil War. After the Civil War, they uh, came in and improved a lot of the corn. They generally threw this out. Um, it was not uh, particularly high in yield. Uh, but, but the southern people enjoyed this for a variety of reasons. Number one, it made great cornmeal. And since cornbread was the main bread consumed down here, uh, this was ideal for cornmeal. Uh, also, you could distill this very easily, as you could really any kind of corn. It was much cheaper to ship corn to market in a liquid form than in a kernel or an ear form. And, uh, but this is probably what the Mills family and the Chandler family, as well as the, the Gardner uh, family, grew. Uh, as you can tell, it gets its name from the size seed. It's called gourd seed. Uh, each seed is about half an inch long, very irregular shaped. It has about 20 rows of kernels per cob. As you can tell, this cob is very large around uh, the circumference of it. It's not the kind of corn that you find today, and you can't go down to the seed store and buy this today. So this is a special order. I believe Williamsburg grows this variety, although it may be a little uh, late for Williamsburg. Uh, but for the Tennessee Valley in 1850, this is ideal. And it was used for hominy, it was used for meal, it was used for uh, whiskey, among other things. Uh, so this particular variety, as opposed to the Hickory King, this particular variety grows about seven feet tall. It has two ears per stalk. And uh, early in the summer, uh, well, middle of the summer, around late July, they would have had what they call roasting ears. Uh, and in that form, it's the it's a very early ear. They would have taken it out, shuck and all, and put it in a fire. They would have roasted it that way, very much like corn on the cob, like we eat today, instead of boiling it like we do today. Uh, then most of the crop would have been left on the stalk and harvested mid-September to early October, and it would have mainly been used for meal, or some of it would have been saved back for seed for the next year. Being an open pollinated variety, you can do that. Again, this is not a hybrid corn. We can save this from year to year, and if the, the temperature and humidity conditions are right, then you can save this particular seed for maybe five years. Now, one thing about pollination, uh, since we are growing a historic variety here, uh, this could easily pollinate with some local uh, farmers, uh, with some local corn around here. And that's unfortunate because all the local farmers around here grow probably Silver Queen, which is a modern hybrid corn. So as a result, we will save our seeds maybe two or three years in a row and then reorder this historic variety about every three years just to keep it pure. Hickory King, which we grew last year in this area and which we will probably grow again sometime, uh, it grows about 12 feet tall. It has three ears per stalk. Uh, but like I said, because this is 1850 in this area, we no longer grow this variety. Maybe someday we can, but it will have to be off-site because corn can pollinate up to a mile. So. So I wouldn't want both of these varieties to pollinate each other.